you were obviously a big supporter of Liz. Um, you, um, you know, you backed her in a campaign. You were very vocal about that. And you know, at the at the end of the campaign, when she won, when mm -hmm. she defeated Rishi Sunak. Mm -hmm. um, it would have been expected that you would get offered some sort of role. Were you expecting a cabinet position, perhaps? I was never ever expecting, nor did I mm. ask for a cabinet position. Um, I would be. I wanted to stay as a minister, as a minister of state. I'd have loved to have been back in the Foreign Office. Just don't forget my career started there many many years ago. Yeah. Um, and then um, they asked me, would I be um, willing to take on the role of chief whip? Um, so it was like, wow. Well, and I remember they said, oh, have a think about it. And um, I said, well, I'm, I'm definitely not saying no, but let me just sort of digest it. And um, I spoke to my husband and I said, well, what do you think? He said, you can't say no. You know, you might never, ever get that chance again. And so it's a tremendous privilege and an honour to, to sit around that cabinet table. But you'd, um, you'd been in the whip's office before. You were going during the into... Brexit years. Yes, during <laughs> the Brexit years, which can't have been easy. But... Yeah. You were going into um, a time in government when you'd got a lot of MPs who voted for the person who didn't win, in Rishi Sunak. You'd got a lot of MPs who'd supported Liz Truss, but really they were Boris Johnson fans. You must have known going into that job as Chief Whip, it was going to be a nightmare. Yeah, I knew it was always going to be a tough gig. And actually, if you were Chief Whip straight after a general election, mm. it's probably a lot easier you come in with a majority. We'd had as a party, we've had quite a turbulent few months. Mm. The, um, you know, standing down of Boris, and the leadership election over the summer, um, and then obviously, excuse me, I'll just switch off. Um, and then obviously Liz, Liz um, was successful. She won the members ballot. So it was always going to be a challenge. And the big thing really, as it is still today, is mm. uniting the Conservative Party. Yeah. That's the key thing, um, and going out there and, and, and fighting for the next general election whenever that happens to come. So I knew it wasn't going to be an easy role, but mm. look, lots of ministerial roles are not easy. You, you know, you grasp it and and you and you get on with it. So um, I, I genuinely say it was a real honour to be able to do it, and also I was the first female chief whip for the Conservative Party. Can you believe it? Mm. And it's taken this long. Yeah. Um, to have a, a female doing the, doing the job. Um, so, y yes, it was tough. Um, you know, it was like one day at a time, and it often felt, felt like that there were lots of forces um, working away mm. in, in the background. Um, but as a whip, you've got a job to do. And people think it's about, you know, we're, we often get described as whips as being the enforcers. Yeah. Um, I don't see it like that. And I think the days of whipping has and needs to change. Um, and that what goes on in the whip's office stays in the whip's office is always the, the phrase that we that we had. But it's as much about making sure that we get the business of the of the day through the Commons. There's also a welfare angle, looking after colleagues, working and building on relationships across across the party. Um, but also the chief whip's role is also to be that link to the prime minister, yeah. and to be able to be the one that delivers the news, whether it's good news, whether it's bad news, the mood of Parliament, um, and so on. So. Um, I'd like to think that um, I was pretty competent. I didn't win. I didn't lose a single vote during the time that I was chief whip. But it, it was it was a challenging time. A lot's been written about one particular day. You know the day I'm going oh, yes, to talk about. I do. Um, yes. It was the day of the fracking vote. Yes. Um, I was watching that. Um, it was it was early evening, yeah. and um, I remember seeing you. I remember hearing the minister first of all responding to the question from a Conservative MP mm -hmm. about whether or not it was uh, it was uh, um, a, a confidence motion in the government, and he said it wasn't. Uh, whereas all day previously it seemingly had been. You then were seen dashing across and quickly sitting behind there with a what I would describe as a look of panic etched across your face. Can you explain in your own words what was going on there? I wouldn't call it panic, I would call it, I would use a different phrase. Um, so look, the, it was, um, it was, it was a, a vote about fracking on the surface of it, mm -hmm. but the way that, that motion was written okay. meant that it was a vote of confidence in the government. So it gets pretty technical, but what it, if, if we had lost that vote, yeah. the opposition, the Labour Party would have, gained control of the order paper. 
which is exactly what happened during the Brexit years. And it gives them a lot of power. It gives them a lot of power. Through. Oliver Letwin did it, and then for that day they can push the agenda, they can push, push legislation through. So it really was a critical time. You had to win. We did have to win. If we if we hadn't won, no doubt my head would have been on the block. So we had to we had to win that vote. So it was it wasn't about confidence in the prime minister. It was about confidence in the government. Um, so as in any tough day in the Whip's office, you work through the day. You work with colleagues. Whip's don't do policy. We just manage relationships with colleagues. Um, so we met with a lot of colleagues, and the day the day progressed. It was also the day when there was the Suella Bradman. Yeah. Issue was as well. There's a lot, a lot happening, um, and as the day goes on, as the whips, you you look at your data, you look at feedback you're getting from colleagues, um, and we were reviewing that all of the time, all of the day, and as far as I was concerned, that is the way it was. I'd flagged with number ten the night before that it was going to be a tough day, but this is this was confidence about this is what we're doing. Um, so we got it got to half past six. Um, before a vote at seven o'clock, um, and then it became clear that number 10's view was slightly different. Um, uh, and then I went ready to tell, so it was a confidence vote, so I went into the chamber with the deputy, um, prepared to tell, which is doing the adding up of people come to the lobby, because it was a confidence vote, and so it was only right and proper that we, we, we took that. And um, then I heard the, what did you refer to in the, when I was sitting on the front bench, yeah. this, this um, it's not a confidence vote, it's just a three line whip. And I said to number 10, it's a confidence vote. You know, you don't talk about whipping from the dispatch box, you just don't yeah. do that. So it sort of like undermined mm. the complete integrity of the whip. So um, at that point I left, you probably saw on TV, I got up and I left the chamber I followed the deputy and um, I went to the whip's office and um, I told I messaged the Prime Minister and said I resigned um, but she didn't accept the resignation so I went I then realized I had to go and vote because the bell had gone mm. and the reason that the chaos ensued was because people were confused they'd been whipped to do one thing yeah. and all of a sudden there's a different message from the dispatch box um, so well, there was when, when you told the Prime Minister, was it a text message you sent when you said I've resigned? What was her response? Text message at one minute seven. That's my tea. It's, it was a text minute message because I knew I had to work do it really quickly. Mm. Um, and then she, as I was going to vote, she came to me and stopped me, and um, I went up to her office with her, with the deputy who had also um, said he was resigning, and we talked through what's happened in the day because she said she wouldn't accept the resignation. So let's talk about what was going on in the lobbies because the, we know that a, a Labour MP put in, uh, he stood in the Commons a little later and made a complaint saying he'd seen bullying and intimidation. We know this was looked into and indeed a couple of days ago I think the result came through that there wasn't. Yes. Were you jostling and cajoling MPs in the No, lobby? because I wasn't the whip. So I walked through and people asked mm. me what was happening and I said, I'm not the chief whip. Yeah. I've resigned, which I think well went was out on social media as well. Yeah. Um, so it, there was an element of chaos. You could see it in the photographs. Yeah. Um, I cannot I cannot say hand on heart that I saw any bullying or intimidation. It was chaotic, yeah. but then it often is when you've got a big vote and you've got a lot of people trying to get into the voting lobby. Um, you know, we could see from the pictures of you know if you're getting six hundred and fifty people through the lobbies. Yeah. Um, but um, I had I had no evidence that of, of, of bullying, um, and nobody ever came to me and said they'd been bullied. Um, one colleague actually said quite the opposite um, that you know people had said that they had been and they hadn't. So, um, but Lindsay did act very swiftly and did do an investigation. So and you're right. Um, but there were there were some there was a there where where he he did he was right to flag was that um, one of the most vocal critics in the chamber from the other side mm. who complained about bullying was the one who'd been taking photographs and one of the rules is we don't take photographs in the lobby and you certainly don't put them out on social media mm. so he got his knuckles wrapped and I think rightly so as well um, but in all of this Pete for me it, this is about to be chief whip you have you have to have integrity mm. and I have to be able to if I so wish remove the whip from somebody yeah. The minute that's gone, I have no authority at all. Um, which is why I stood up for the role of the, whip, of the whip's office. 
Did in in the aftermath of that, did your relationship with the Prime Minister, who you, as we've said, you supported all the way through, you've clearly been fairly close with for a while in Parliament. Did that relationship break down? What I will say is that, well, you probably read the article in the Mail on Sunday that featured quite a lot on that. And there was a lot on Twitter about um, Number 10's view of me as the Chief Whip, the names that I'd been called. Mm. Um, so towards the end, we still have a professional relationship, but not with a huge amount of contact, is the, is the fair, fairest way of saying it. Did you know after that vote that the Prime Minister's days were numbered. I mean, it was the next day, wasn't it? I think when she went I, to see Graham yeah. Brady and it started. I think, I think things have been difficult for a while. If you look, mm. if you look back, and which is why I think from the very beginning she had a really tough time. We yeah. had the mini budget. By the death of the Queen, we had the mini budget. Um, colleagues who were really not happy with that yeah. number of U-turns. What um, did you think of that mini budget? Yeah, I was. I was, if I'm really honest, surprised at the speed with which it was brought forward. Mm. Um, it, it was always going to be tough, and look, we need to, we do need to grow the economy, but I think with hindsight, and hindsight is a great thing. And I never, I say, I don't do policy, so I had didn't have sight of it before it, it came. I think colleagues probably needed a bit more preparation for it, and mm. probably needed a bit more planning, planning for it. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of really bold stuff in there that she subsequently had to U-turn on that caused a lot of problems. So I think there was a constant... I, I, I don't think it was just what happened on that Wednesday night. I think mm. it, was, it was very, very difficult for her from, for over, over a number of weeks. But it became increasingly clear that, um, you know, it was about, for me, as a, as a, it would take one day at a time. Mm. Do you, do you think, I mean, you, you mentioned before, you say you felt a bit betrayed by what happened in, on that particular vote. Do you think that you've been in for some real unfair uh, treatment regarding not just that night, but your time in the, in the office? Well, you use the word betrayed. I think I was just frustrated and angry more, mm. than, any, more than anything else. Um, and I think the other thing I would say is, you know, you, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that was out there on social media yeah. um, about... Um, the DPM and comments that she'd had to save me. There was, it was reported last week that the PM said she hated me. Yes, um, I saw that. You know, yeah. and and that for me that's quite a strong word. You know, yeah. people who said I was there was it was reported that I was clueless. Mm. Um, and actually, I'm sorry, Pete, but I'm quite a competent person. You know, I haven't got this far in life without a degree of competency. Mm. Um, so it, it often felt that the machinery of Number Ten were briefing against me. Okay, um, but, but that but you take some of that with rough and tumble of being an MP. You know, MP being a member of Parliament, being a minister. Um, you know, politics is a tough old world. Uh, but at the same time, I do I do expect certain standards in in in, in politics. Mm. I do expect a degree of integrity mm. and decency. I mean, talking about that that particular issue, you've also reportedly uh, submitted a formal complaint to CCHQ over Gavin Williamson and some messages that you've received. Can you explain to us about that? Um, I'd rather not go into that just today, Pete. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, I have submitted. I confirm I have submitted mm. something. Um, because again, I, I feel very strongly that. Um, it, for me, the integrity of Parliament really matters. The yeah. Standards in Parliament really matter, and having respect for colleagues, we all get, we all get, we can all get hot under the collar and say things. Mm. But I think there's, there, are, there has to be decency. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that, I, I hope number ten, uh, not number ten, CCHQ take it seriously. Okay, um, let's look forward now. Um, you're you know, serving under a prime minister now who you didn't support, mm -hmm. uh, obviously in the leadership election. Do you think Rishi Sunak can bring the party together and can he get the Conservatives back on track? Because you know, there's no absolutely no doubt about it, the party parliamentary terms has massively lost its way, has it not? The parliamentary party's had a really tough time. Um, I think what Rishi can, but more importantly has to do, is unite the parliamentary party. But it's not just the parliamentary party, we have our local members on the ground, our councillors, our um, you know, the voluntary party that come election time are the ones that go and help us deliver the leaflets and, and knock on doors. So I think if there's a piece of work around that, 
we talk about stabilising the party as well, but but as well as that, we face some big economic questions. And there's the budget that's coming on the 17th of, of, the, of this month. So it's, really, it's going to be really important that he grasp those as well. And, and that is all part, in my view, of pulling the party together. And it's about understanding, um, you know, what are we going to do on triple lock? I raised that in the House of Commons this week. I raised with him direct at my first PMQs since um, I came back from the back benches about the Green Belt. Um, the issues that matter to me here, to my constituents. So uh, my view of the parliamentary world now is that I will use every opportunity to continue to, to, to further all those campaigns and causes that I've been um, you know, championing for some time in a way that I can from the backbenches, which I couldn't when I was a minister.